O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Good evening to you. I'm Father Jonathan Rowe. I'm the parish priest at St. Michael's Anglican Church, the church in Kenmount Terrace. It's Tuesday, the 6th of July, and we've gathered online to pray the office of evening prayer. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. I'm going to take a few moments to light a candle to symbolize the prayers of the scattered church, continuing to ascend into heaven, even when we can't physically gather for worship. You can do the same at home if you'd like, and when we're ready, the service of evening prayer will begin on page 20. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 10 and 11, beginning on page 340. Why standest thou so far off, O Lord, and hidest thy face in the needful time of trouble? The ungodly in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the crafty wiliness that they have imagined. For the ungodly maketh boast of his own heart's desire, and the covetous man renounceth, yea, scorneth the Lord. The ungodly, in his pride, thinketh that God will not punish. Neither is God in all his thoughts. His ways are always prosperous, Thy judgments are far out of his sight, therefore defieth he all his enemies. For he hath said in his heart, Tush, I shall not be cast down. No harm shall ever happen unto me. His mouth is full of cursing, deceit, and fraud. Under his tongue is ungodliness and iniquity. He sitteth lurking in the thievish corners of the streets, and privily in his lurking dens doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are set against the poor. He lieth waiting secretly, as it were a lion in his den. He lurketh that he may ravish the poor. He doth ravish the poor when he getteth him into his net. He stoopeth down and croucheth, that the poor may fall into the hands of his captains. He hath said in his heart, Tush, God hath forgotten. He hideth away his face, and he will never see it. Arise, O God, and lift up thine hand. Forget not the poor. Wherefore should the wicked blaspheme God? while he doth say in his heart, Tush, thou God, wilt not seek it out. Surely thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest trouble and sorrow, that thou mayest take the matter into thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee, for thou art the helper of the friendless. Break thou the power of the ungodly and malicious. Seek out his wickedness until thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever, and the nations are perished out of his hand. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the poor. Thou dost establish their heart, and thine ear hearkeneth thereto to help the fatherless and the oppressed unto their right, 
that the men of the earth be no more exalted against them. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye then unto my soul that she should flee as a bird unto the hill? For lo, the ungodly bend their bow and make ready their arrows upon the string, that they may privily shoot at them that are true of heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord approveth the righteous, but the ungodly and him that delighteth in wickedness doth his soul abhor. Upon the ungodly he shall rain brimstone and coals of fire. Storm and tempest shall be their portion to drink. For the Lord is righteous, he loveth righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the first book of Samuel, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore, I pray, pardon my sin, and return with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. As Samuel turned to go away, Saul laid hold upon the skirt of his robe, and it tore. And Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you this day, and has given it to a neighbor of yours, who is better than you. And also the glory of Israel will not lie or repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned. Yet honor me now before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. So Samuel turned back after Saul, and Saul worshipped the Lord. Then Samuel said, Bring here to me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Agag came to him cheerfully. Agag said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. And Samuel said, As your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agag in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death. But Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Here endeth the first lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath shown strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, 
as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the Acts of the Apostles, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 32nd verse. Now, as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints that lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she fell sick and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, entreating him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he had come, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. Then, turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed at jo in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. Here endeth the second lesson. The Office of Evening Prayer continues on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. 
O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who didst give such grace unto thy holy apostles, St. Peter and St. Paul, that they were enabled to bear witness to the truth by their death, grant unto thy church that, as in the beginning it was enlightened by their teaching, so it may continue in the same unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. I invite you to call to mind this evening some way in the last 24 hours that you have been particularly aware of the presence of God. Where have you seen God at work in the world? And just as importantly, what have you seen God doing? Give thanks and praise for the gift of that experience and pray for the grace and strength and courage to join in what God is doing. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Again, thanks for praying with us this evening. I hope that these daily services of morning and evening prayer are a blessing to you. And I hope as well that they're becoming a habit for you, part of your disciplined, ordered daily life of prayer. Remind you that we pray morning prayer on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 o'clock, and evening prayer on Thursdays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at 4.30. And those are the times that the video premieres, but you can, of course, tune in on demand and any other time later in the day that it's convenient for you. Until we meet again, be good, God bless, and take care of each other. Bye-bye.